Hello and thanks for watching. My name is Kenneth Bailey and I lead the Isaric 4C Consortium together with my friends and co-leads Callum Semple and Peter Openshaw. Our study is about understanding new infectious diseases quickly and for the benefit of all. Because we started work on this 10 years ago, we were able to establish the study in almost every hospital in the UK before COVID hit. And thanks to the extraordinary efforts of research teams across the NHS and to the generosity of patients themselves, we were able to get data and samples from patients across the country from the very beginning of the outbreak. That enabled us to discover key risk factors for the disease, to reveal how the immune system responds to the virus, and to create widely used tools to predict who is most at risk of deterioration or death. We also discovered human genetic variants associated with life-threatening COVID, which lead directly to potential new treatments. Since the beginning, we've shared data and samples directly with whoever can use them across the whole country to make an impact on the outbreak. But what I'm most proud of is what you're about to see, a team of amazing people who signed up to make a difference in COVID, many of whom have still never met each other, but who have worked together across the whole country day and night for over a year to advance science in the most difficult circumstances anyone can remember. And as you'll see, some of them are really quite talented. My name is Zakia Leeming. I'm the composer of Dawn on the Morning After the Storm. I've been working with health data researchers since 2018 to create music informed by their work and experiences. The idea for this piece came about when I heard about the informal music making consortium we're sharing online during the pandemic. It was a pleasure to work with each of the performer researchers and to hear about the role of music making in their lives. We would like to share with you some of the conversations that informed the creation of this piece. The piece is dedicated to the Isaric Falsi Consortium and to everyone who made this vital research possible. Thank you for watching. My name is Callum Semple. I'm one of the leads on Isaric 4C. Hello, I'm Livy Swan. I'm a children's doctor specialising in infectious disease and I've been leading the paediatric analysis in ISRIC as part of an amazing team. My name is Louisa Pollock. I'm a general paediatrician and a consultant in paediatric infectious diseases at the Royal Hospital for Children in Glasgow. I'm Murray Flam. I'm a computational biologist uh, linking different data sets together for ISARIC. My name is Rina Pius. I'm a data scientist at Edinburgh University. My name is Paul Klenerman. I work at the University of Oxford. I trained in uh, medicine and specialised in um, infectious diseases. I'm Shona Moore. Um, I'm a T-cell biologist um, and virologist. My name's Ewan Harrison and I'm a surgeon and data scientist based in Edinburgh. So my instrument is the Great Highland Bagpipe. I've played it since I was uh, about nine years old, although I wasn't playing the bagpipe to start with. This is what it looks like. Um, it has a chanter, which is a fairly simple fingered woodwind instrument with a, a reed much like a bassoon reed. And then there's three drones, a bass and two tenors, and the reeds inside there are like clarinet reeds. And down at the bottom you've got a bag which is an air reservoir and that uh, saves my breath between when I'm taking breaths it carries on playing. That's the Great Highland Bagpipe. I learned the violin and, and play that in, in different guises and um, also learned to play um, 
a bit of guitar and saxophone along the way to, to play in a band um, at the at the uh, the whim called the Imposters um, and uh, play a bit for myself. Within this music project, I play the piano. I just remember how exciting it was to to, to sit in a room and to play very simple clarinet parts, but as part of a really loud, really uh, uh, kind of emotionally engaging experience. Uh, and uh, that was my that would have been my first experience of of playing with an ensemble group. I enjoy music. Both listen to music and play music. I play the violin and piano, um, and I'm trying to play those throughout my uh, professional life when I can. Um, but it hasn't always been possible <laughs> in working in lots things. I started playing keyboard and clarinet in school. Um, I was in school orchestras. Um, this was in Aberdeen, so Aberdeen had a very good music centre at the time. Um, with orchestras and concert bands. Uh, so I went to those um, and then I went to university in Edinburgh uh, and it turned out Edinburgh had a, a lot of the same things. It had a, a wind band that I joined. I've always loved singing so singing's always been what I've done to kind of release any any kind of emotion if I've been happy or if I've been sad or stressed or anything. It's always been through singing but it's been primarily for myself at, at school I, I i was involved in big bands so i used to sing for the big band in kind of our sixth form um, but that was really kind of uh, and in kind of school concerts and things but after that i didn't really um sing for anybody other than me music's kind of always been a part of my life but i've not necessarily always played music i've kind of gone through phases i've played um violin and piano most um dabbled a little bit with clarinet when I was at, at high school um, and I've kind of gone in and out of phases with those instruments. Uh, the concept was born out of frustration that there was not a good research response to pandemic influenza and that's because when, it ha when a pandemic happens it, it comes so quickly. Uh, you first whiff of it uh, a few cases in a far off country and within six weeks every country in the world is affected and to do research you need to have permissions and protocols and documents and agreements in place before you can move data or you can move samples and by the time you're six weeks into a pandemic the, uh, the other part of pandemic is the words pan and ick panic and people are just panicking and you can't get anything done. So if you want to run research in an outbreak, you need to prepare. With this outbreak, the virus came to us. It affected our friends and our family, every part of our daily lives. And while I'm very lucky to have a job and a good income and a good house and a big garden, which I can enjoy and go out and relax in, and I know a lot of people lost their employment didn't have gardens that they could enjoy and, and also lost friends and family. Um, as far as the nature of the outbreak and the intensity of the work, I've never worked as hard and worked without breaks for months on end. So not at the time to decompress. And that has been difficult. It's not like it's a disease which affects just the patients. It's a disease that's affected um, our colleagues, our staff, our friends, not just through their community, but actually through their work. They've gone to work. A lot of them have went to work, caught it, and many have died. And that's, again, different to usual working circumstances. So I, th I think a lot of people don't understand that um, if you're in the health or caring profession, COVID is very real and has probably affected every waking moment of your day. For, for the last year. And, and my perspective is maybe a bit different from from some people because, you know, Oxford's had this very central role in the vaccine. Um, so we've sort of seen that 
kind of emerged from the very beginning and, and I'm not in particularly involved in the trials but we are quite heavily involved in some of the immunology around around them and um, so so it, it feels like great to, to be part part of the kind of that process um, and I mean that's obviously the vaccines are the things that are making or likely in the future to make the biggest difference to you know had, returning to normal um, it's been a bit of a whirlwind because everybody wants the information yesterday. Um, there's so many unknowns. There's so many things that you would like to do. Um, and we, we know we've kind of got the tools and approaches to kind of address these. But um, then there was just, a, I guess, reflecting on it, so it was a series of endless hurdles of, of trying to get these big teams together, trying to overcome some of the safety issues, the, the distancing issues, the, you know, the, the kind of endless things that you need to jump over so you have to kind of step back and, and it, it's very easy to get bogged down in the the kind of uh, the, the endless feeling of struggle to kind of achieve a, a particular aim and just sort of say well actually you know we, we can do this you just need to essentially keep the momentum up keep the um, uh, the enthusiasm and, and commitment because it, it was quite easy at the beginning for everybody to sort of down tools because they were you know, there was nothing else to do, and and we 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 set up everybody off on this on this kind of massive campaign to try and measure the immune responses and figure out what they were doing and, and try and see if we could predict anything. Um, but but that's a kind of uh, a, a not sustainable effort. In Liverpool, in particular, we've be kind of been the centre of the kind of the sampling um, and kind of had all of the samples from all of the different different sites come through here and, and we kind of have been sending them out to everybody um, and that's just been like this kind of huge pretty incredible operation actually to look back on it um, and that has really kind of driven a lot of the research and, and again it's kind of come down to the kind of pace that this this year has been we've learned so much um, I mean, it's just been really, really fast paced because we've been able to, to do all of that within such a big consortium. My role in ISARIC has been to help the consortium with data analysis. So I work with a fabulous, inspiring group of young individuals who all have these amazing data science skills. That means that they can take data and they can do wonderful things to it in order to help interpret it and uh, maybe maybe things like making graphs with it and so in, in order that we can understand what it is trying to tell us and that really is about understanding the experience of individual patients who have who have covid and one of the things that we have become good at is turning that around very quickly very quickly to the point that it can actually be done live so we were able to take data that was being collected in real time by an amazing group of predominantly research nurses up and down the UK, uh, working on the front line, working in hospitals, uh, who were collecting data about individual patients coming into hospital with COVID-19. And we were able to take the data that they were putting into the computer, process it, turn it from disparate pieces of information actually into, into knowledge, into something that could be used in order to help understand what was happening on a day-to-day -day basis in UK hospitals. Prior to COVID, I probably was actually playing once a month to once a week, just, just for my own pleasure and benefit. And I do feel my world has become smaller and too too busy. Um, I've, I've got the pipes going there, it, but they didn't strike. When you say strike, normally you, you you get them up, blow them, tap them, and they just come straight in. And I struck them there, and you could tell that what the where the drones weren't in tune, it didn't strike straight away. They, that's because it's not been played for a month. We tried to keep in touch the orchestra for a little while on Zoom and discovered uh, the the terrible consequences if you try and play on Zoom without anything to correct the latency. <laughs> so it was worth doing for a laugh one time, but we never repeated the experience. So it's yeah, it's it's, it's not been easy to find.
proper opportunities to play. Um, I'm also a social dancer, um, and both you know collaborative music and social dancing. You know they've, they've both died to death recently. And actually, kind of coming to this process has been really lovely because it has reminded me that it's something that I can can do, and also something that doesn't just have to be. Um, kind of in the shower <laughs> it doesn't just have to be be private so it's actually really lovely to to kind of take the lid off that again um, and it's felt really yeah it's felt really exciting the music that i play at home and my professional life are really quite separate in a way that is different not having reflected upon it before to how life was in certainly in school but also in in university and for a few years after university and I don't see that as being a good thing. It's it's quite a it's maybe a negative thing that medicine becomes so all encompassing during one's day uh, that there's not necessarily the space in order to be able to have a professional life that can incorporate other things within it, like like music. And I do wonder whether that is. A sign of our times because you know within certainly within medicine in the past there used to be much more of a social side of it that went along and there might have been musical groups that were associated with the hospital or drama groups or musical theatre groups and I'm sure that that still occurs in in parts but I, my sense is that it is much reduced than it maybe was previously. Oh, it's exciting to kind of have an opportunity to um, just get back into it and be a bit inspired by it again. So the music is, is really a release, I think, and it just allows you to kind of enter some other world. And so those, those moments where you can sort of move off somewhere else and just leave it behind for a bit, is being, they've just been brilliant. And you sort of suddenly come out of it and realise that you haven't been thinking about the pandemic for a few minutes, and that's absolutely brilliant. The the motivation, it's there's something about teamwork which is great fun. You know you're doing something together with people. Uh, I think also just showing that there's more to the, the boffins and eggheads than somehow being uh, ethereal people that are not connected with emotion or music or the, thing, the things that uh, make us happy. And music tends to make me happy. Uh, it relaxes me. I think it just shows that we're a bit more human, that we are connected with people. The other bit that was kind of fun was because we're, we're playing, recording different bits of the same, uh, or a different violin parts. Um, you get to kind of hear all the different components um, being built up, which is actually really nice. So you don't normally get an opportunity to, to do that. You're just playing one part. I realise how much I need a conductor, so I need that visual cue of you know of a conductor, and um, and also I definitely need like I, I know this from the orchestra. You listen to your cues from other instruments, and you come in at the point where it feels musically right. This kind of project is a total reflection of the consortium and and how that has worked because we kind of all had our little focuses and our you know like our own little jobs, and we just are doing that. And yeah, okay, you, you speak to people, but like overall it's it, sometimes you can kind of lose kind of perspective because that it's such a huge consortium and there's so much going on because you're just kind of focused in your own little bubble sometimes um so yeah in a way it's like quite reflective of that <laughs> but also i wondered if it was deliberate in the music because actually something about the collaborative nature of Ezric that um actually we're all getting on with our own little parts and we don't know what the other people are doing and but they're all part of the the whole and so there's actually very different tunes going on and different parts going on um and at first when you listen to it it's it, it's quite uh, overwhelming in the sound but actually once you know what each of the individual parts is you see how they fit into the to the whole thing and i thought that's quite fitting i actually quite enjoyed having the having to have the discipline to take myself away from um either just sitting on the emails and doing the work for the pandemic or sitting in front of the telly <laughs> but it's quite important to sit in front of the telly with the family 
too. Um, and to do this music properly, you really do need to set aside probably an hour a night, and I'm not, I'm not finding time to set aside an hour a night to do that. And um, so it's just it's reminding me that your time is precious. You can't you can't be everything to everyone, everyone, but you do need to set time time aside for your own relaxation and well being. And the the music is probably the best one for doing that. Although I'm going to start keeping bees again soon. I mean, it's really nice to have a project like this just to think about, which is entirely different, uses a different bit of your brain and and just um, sort of has a different flavour to it. So I, I, I've, um, I've really enjoyed that. I mean, it's been quite, in addition to actually playing it, it's been quite fun just to discuss it as a project, you know, with the family and, and friends about, you know, this idea. So... Um, and I think everybody thought it was really interesting. So that so so you know just being part of it has been really uh, fun. I think and um, very positive, um, and uh, more, just more than just literally the playing of the notes. I think just the kind of sense of doing something. I think a big thing is that they kind of they offer some respite from each other. Um, it's it's nice having. A, said before it's um it's nice having something completely different from what you do from your day job to get into um and also because also the the ways in which they're completely different you know i i, I work in kind of uh clinical science in um scientific research it's where it's very you know logical and methodical uh and then i've got kind of as a contrast to that the music which is uh, especially the kind of music that I like playing, where it's it's personal expression, it's you know injecting your own personality into what you're playing and playing playing something in such a way that only you can can you know play it that way, uh, something that only you can produce. I think an extension of that is the importance I think that creativity has. In, in wellness in us all um, and, uh, and medicine as is the case with many careers has risks for individuals working in it of, of burnout or stress or anxiety or depression which can occur as a direct result of what might be happening in the workplace and a creative part of, of of a life, I think, can really help with that, and can really help. So it certainly helps me. If there is the opportunity for a follow up, where uh, we all come to Liverpool or something and have a live re-recording, live replay of it, then I'd be interested. I think what is really lovely about that piece is that um, it is it's open to interpretation for whoever's listening to it to put their their own kind of um, their own problems the own, their own experience of the pandemic into the piece and then also to feel the, the calmness that comes with it so I think it's it's lovely because it's not didactic in terms of how it felt or how um, you know, this is the way it must have been experienced. It's 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 beauty is, I think, also because it is um, it's so akin to a kind of a, a, a kind of folk song or a kind of you know kind of sea shanty type idea, and bringing um, bringing the those kind of very powerful metaphors of the sea and of the safety of harbour and things together. I think is really. The, the, the first, yeah, the, the first time I, I read it through, it, it made me smile and it made me feel calm. Actually, it was really lovely because and coming to the end when you're um, when you're kind of re reading it and listening to it, uh, it just it's it doesn't belittle what you've been through and it doesn't tell you that it's all over, but it does tell you that you know we've made it this far 